it doesn't look good. They say looks aren't everything, but you should trust your eyes on this one. Here are the 10 worst looking dishes people eat around the world. Oh, I don't know how you can eat that. Stink heads from Alaska. And you know what I discovered? You can eat it. Let's take a trip to the picturesque blue waters of scenic Alaska, where we find an entree with a way less picturesque name, stink heads. While a delicious salmon filet is considered a main course anywhere in the world, and whole fish dishes are too, in Alaska, there's one particular part of the salmon that gets special treatment, the head, with eyeballs and teeth included. Definitely not an appetizing sight in the kitchen, or anywhere else for that matter. The preparation of the fish head is generously referred to as fermentation, but realistically just relies on room temperature rot and natural decomposition, which of course leads to the powerful smell that gives this notorious dish its even more famous name. Leftover king salmon heads are placed into barrels made of either wood or plastic and left to take their natural course that all dead things do. At a certain point, the heads are deemed ready and eventually served up as a mash since all that's left by then is basically a mush. And mush is what stink heads will likely turn your insides into. The U.S. Center for Disease Control notes that Alaska is the state with the most foodborne botulism than any other in the Union, and in a span of almost 70 years, from 1950 to 2017, had recorded nearly 400 cases and resulted in 24 deaths. The Alaska Division of Public Health has pointed the finger squarely at traditional foods like stink heads, and that the preparation process doesn't even qualify as technical fermentation. Sounds like stink heads are one food worth causing a stink over. The fish stinks up the drapes. Gomutra from India. Tastes like goblin piss. Drinking a large quantity of anything is gonna make you have to rush to the washroom, but we don't recommend that large quantity be anything you might find in that washroom. Unless you're in India and get your hands on some gomutra, which is nothing more than straight up cow urine. The stuff looks as nasty as anything that fills a typical toilet bowl and can actually be found in washrooms in more ways than one, since it's also sold as an industrial floor cleaner. Gomutra has been approved as the official floor cleaner of government offices in India since 2015, and between drinking it and sloshing it on the floor, India goes through cow pee by the bucket and has a dedicated refinery where Gomutra is mass-produced. As a drink, cow urine is claimed to have significant health benefits dating back to usage in ancient medicine, and is said to cure a laundry list of ailments including ulcers, kidney disorders, asthma, psoriasis, allergies, and liver disease, among others. Even if it works, we'd rather hold off on the taste and smell and put up with seeing a doctor instead. Drinking your own pee. It's truly unpleasant. The loot in the Philippines. Don't eat that! Yeah. Nobody likes to be called chicken, but in the case of this putrid poultry dish, we wouldn't blame you for running scared. From the outside, balut looks like nothing more than a traditional hard-boiled egg, but appearances can be deceiving. What's inside that pearly white eggshell is enough to turn the toughest iron stomach. Balut isn't technically an egg dish, and that's because the egg within has matured past the familiar sunny-side-up stage. Balut is consumed as a chicken or duck embryo that has partially developed somewhere between yolk and youngling that is boiled and then slurped straight from the shell, like some nightmarish version of oysters on the half shell. While the American eggs that we know and love and associate with wholesome family breakfast are unfertilized, it's the complete opposite when it comes to balut. These eggs are fertilized and allowed to grow through an incubation process that takes course over several weeks until the innards have reached the development stage long enough for a fetus to take shape, aka the body of a dead baby duck, including visually identifiable features right down to the eyes, beak, and feathers. But aside from the revolting appearance, Baloot provides plenty of other health and safety reasons to avoid it, and plenty of countries around the world have laws in place to keep folks away from this dish, including Australia and the United Kingdom, among others. Meanwhile, Canada has officially labeled Baloot as a hazardous food due to the risk of fecal particles in the shell as well as the breeding ground it presents for salmonella. So if just looking at it doesn't make you sick, the risk of ingesting it probably will. Big win is a big risk. 
New to Babbletop? Then how about hitting that subscribe button? It's easier than trying anything on this list. Thanks. Who would I be without you? Casu Marzu from Italy. When you think of Italian food, there's no doubt of what wonderfully comforting flavors first spring to mind. Images of the rolling hills of the Tuscany countryside create immediate visuals of hearty pasta dishes, traditional pizzas, or classic cheeses. But one particular cheese would make even the most seasoned palate say Arrivederci, Casu Marzu. Despite the fancy name, the secret ingredient makes it sound more like it belongs in a dumpster than a kitchen. And what is that secret ingredient? Maggots. Yes, those creepy crawly critters somehow factored into a food scenario where somebody thought they were a good idea. The process starts with regular pecorino cheese that is allowed to decompose long enough for it to go rotten enough to attract flies, then for the flies to lay eggs inside it, which then leaves the maggots to burrow around and digest the fatty parts of the cheese. The result is a cheese with a borderline slimy feel and an extremely pungent scent and tales of live maggots still being on the cheese while being eaten, maybe for a little extra texture? While the stomach-turning process has been around for centuries, there are no exceptions made for the sake of tradition. Naturally, selling food infected by parasites doesn't meet the modernized standards for hygienic practices or safe food consumption, and thus it has been illegal to sell Casimarzu commercially in Italy since 1962. Rumors of it being available in certain black markets and back alleys persist, but we think that any cheese found in a dirty dark alley should get tossed in the garbage cans that are back there. Made out of literal garbage. Fugu fish in Japan. Mmm, fan fugu testing. This next fishy situation comes from the other side of the Pacific, and in its natural state, blows up more than your phone after an Instagram brunch post. Sea life features all kinds of delicacies that aren't exactly appealing to the eye, from the claws and antennae of a lobster to the suction cups of an octopus. But the fugu fish might have the most eye-popping feature of them all. As a variety of puffer fish that can expand and contract on demand, even in a starving situation, you might not pick the bizarre fugu fish as the catch of the day. I brought you me finest catch of the day. We lost a dozen good men. But it's worth it. And while it's not as strange looking once properly prepared and set on a plate, the process of getting this puffy Pacific protein ready for human consumption is extremely intricate. This is because, after puffing up its proportions, the next line of defense to ward off predators is an extremely poisonous venom it carries called tetrodotoxin, which renders attackers completely paralyzed and asphyxiated. Due to the skill required to serve fugu without killing customers, chefs must be fully licensed, following Japanese regulations that have been enforced since 1958. Only about 35% of the applicants are cleared to prep and sell fugu for public consumption, which is an even more intimidating prospect than having a puffer fish swim up to your face. So like some other dishes we've seen, if looking at it isn't enough to keep you away, the poisoning risk should certainly do it. Ah, tasty. Stinky Tofu in China smell it. Japan isn't alone on the Pacific Rim when it comes to eyesore dishes, and this one combines the stinky part from the Alaskan side of the Pacific with a classic Asian dish, tofu. Stinky tofu is fermented and is overcooked to a level of blackening that resembles the look and texture of a brownie someone left in the oven for way too long. This gives it a crispy outer shell and a mushy inside, sort of like a burnt marshmallow. The nasty visual is matched only by the nastier smell, which lives up to the name and has been compared to raw sewage, smelly feet, rotting meat, a baby diaper, and a full dumpster. Stinky tofu actually dates back to China's Qing Dynasty of the 16th century, when tofu merchant Wang Jiehe stumbled on the concept after noticing the lingering scent of his aging leftover tofu supply, and that the natural aging process increased the flavor. Today, the popular Chinese tofu brand Wang Jiehe still bears the name of this pioneer of the putrid-looking and pungent-smelling snack. Everyone wants to be remembered for something, but this dish might be best forgotten. Let's just forget it. Su Calusardu in Italy. Authentic Italian food. This cheese is called su calusardu, but we can just call it hard to look at. 
This cheese is enough to turn anybody's stomach because it's literally prepared in a goat's stomach. The process entails slaughtering a baby goat after feeding it milk and then harvesting that milk from the dead goat kid and pouring it back into the fourth of the animal's four stomachs. At that point, the milk-filled stomach is removed from the baby goat carcass and salted, then hung up to cure and dry for several months. The resulting product is a saggy, wrinkly, hardened sack that used to be a stomach that is then busted open to harvest the now-matured cheese within. It looks anything but appetizing and has an aftertaste to match. Naturally, the whole stomach thing lends itself to the cheese tasting exactly like where it was sitting, so reviews liken it to the tastes of acid reflux, bile, or just plain vomit. We'd recommend passing on this dish, unless you want to be past the Pepto-Bismol. Oh no, not again. Haukart in Iceland. That sounds weird. A fish fillet dinner usually conjures up images of harmless freshwater friends like trout, walleye, and catfish. But on the top of that food chain, sharks are the terrifying apex predators of the seas. Hello. And a viewing of a heart-stopping movie like Jaws is more likely to make you feel scared than hungry. Up in Iceland, however, somebody decided the fearsome-looking fish would make a fantastic lunch. Icelanders enjoy the fermented meat of the Greenland shark, which has the longest lifespan of any shark, and over that time can grow up to 23 feet long and weigh more than 3,000 pounds. They're certainly something you wouldn't want to see on your afternoon swim. But in Iceland, you might see some on your dinner plate. Their scary size translates to a fearful taste as well, with Anthony Bourdain once describing the Greenland shark as the quote, single worst, most disgusting and terrible tasting thing he ever ate. The single worst thing I've ever put in my mouth. Kiviak in Greenland. She's fascinated with Greenland. She enjoys teasing animals, ban lawn, and seeing people running for their lives. Time to visit Greenland. Some folks have surf and turf dinners, but in this case, the sky meets the sea in a bizarre traditional food. For Kiviak, a freshly slaughtered seal is disemboweled, and the carcass is stuffed to the brim with small arctic birds known as little auk. And either the seal is really big or the birds are really small, because upwards of 500 little birdies get squeezed in there before it's sewn shut. The whole thing gets buried underground and ferments for as short as three months or as long as a year and a half. And when it's done, the seal gets sliced open and the little birdies are consumed one by one. Popular methods include eating them whole, bones and beaks and all, or biting off the head and sucking down the innards like a juice box. Ozzy Osbourne once bit off the head of a bat, but even he might shy away from taking a chomp out of this winged weirdness. You sober now? No, no, yeah, yeah. I, I never, but I, I, Udumit in Greenland. This next nastiness also hails from Greenland and is proof that anything is edible if you're hungry enough. Udumit is a traditional stew of seal meat and oil, which features an ingredient that would make most people think you're full of bull ptarmigan poop. Specifically, the rock ptarmigan bird subsists largely on a diet of birch and willow trees that renders their droppings a surprisingly nutritious form of plant-based protein. Most of the plants come out undigested, and since rock ptarmigans are known to leave up to 50 droppings at a time, it's also easily harvested. While understandably not available in mainstream Greenlandic culture, this dish is considered a delicacy of indigenous inhabitants of the barely survival northernmost climates of Greenland, where the harsh elements make food extremely scarce. So the next time you think you've had a crappy lunch, thank your lucky stars it's not as crappy as it could be. That's so bad. Tap or click to enjoy another great video, and show us some love by hitting that subscribe button and ringing that notification bell.